Renal colic or kidney stones. That's what we're talking about today on Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I am Dr. Peter Ince. Dr. Ince is a urologist. He's been with us before. Our viewers have certainly appreciated the information he has shared. Today we're going to talk about a really important talk, kidney stones. These are very common. Let's start at the beginning, Peter. What is a kidney stone? And how did it get there? Yeah, seriously. Well, they're very, very nasty little calcifications in the kidney. They're formed from the tubules of the kidney. They grow bigger over time, and one day they just sort of break off, and they fall out of the kidney, get stuck in that narrow little tube that goes from the kidney to the bladder. And when they cause blockage, all hell breaks loose. Okay, so they, they get stuck in your ureter, that little, in the ureter. That little tube there, and then when they get stuck, this causes pain. Pain, so yes. This is why people are coming to, do they go to their family doctor? Or are they going oh, right to no. the ER? Oh, they're going to the ER. <laughs> Normally, I mean, let's put it this way. I've had women who were delivering babies in the middle of labor, and they had a kidney stone. Okay. And they said, I don't care about the baby, just get rid of this stone, because that's how <laughs> bad on. they are. Worse really? than childbirth. Really? And this is coming from women, so they know what they're talking about. Well, usually they do. They're good at pain. Um, okay, so they have severe pain, so they come to the emergency room, and, and where is the pain located? Where are they feeling this? Well, the pain is caused by obstruction. Okay. So that's the important thing to know. Even though the kidney stone might be moving down, the urine can't get out, so it backs up into the kidney. So your kidney stone can be anywhere along the path of that tube going down to the bladder but mostly the pain will be felt in the back, even though the kidney stone can be lower or anywhere down towards the bladder. Okay, so the location of the pain does not correlate with the location of the stone? No. But the pain is severe? Not always, but yes, it's, it's to the degree of obstruction. So if you have a stone that sort of is just scratching on the way out and the urine can flow around it, you don't get a lot of pain. You might get a bit of blood in the urine. Um, and then the other thing, as it gets stuck, the narrowest spot is right near the bladder. Right. And you might present with just a lot of urgency frequency. You've got to go to the bathroom all the time, and you go, and you still feel, feel irritated. Okay. So, uh, but most of the time, it's pain. All right. So basically, the most common presenting thing would be presenting symptom would be pain. Yes. Can we just jump to quickly risk factor? Who's who's at risk for getting kidney stones or renal colic? Well. A lot of, basically everyone is at risk. About one in 10 people will get them. Mm -hmm. And if you get one, you're gonna have another one probably within 10 years, unless you, you know, do a lot of modifications. But- That sounds um, like a curse you just put on. <laughs> yeah, or if someone in your family, if there's a family history, that also increases your risk. Okay, and then what about, um, I mean, I've heard of people getting it when they go on like high protein diets or if you're dehydrated, anything like that can predispose you. Yeah, and, and kidney stones are a bit more complicated than people think. Everyone says, well, just drink more water or just cut out spinach or, you know, don't drink milk. But it's actually a much more complex topic. If there's one thing you can do to help prevent them, it would be to keep yourself well hydrated because okay. Stones are made when all the waste products of your kidneys uh, are diluted in water. And if that water, if there's not enough water, then it'll precipitate out, form these crystals, which form stones and pain. Okay, hydrate, drink a lot of water. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, so we talked about the most common presenting symptom, which would be a lot of pain. Uh, and so both the pain in the flank, it's usually in the, in the back, like the lower back yeah. and radius to the groin. Right here can radiate down towards the groin. Okay. Okay, so you've got the pain, you go to the emergency room. What's going to happen to you when you get to the emergency room as a workup uh, for kidney stones? Well, most of the time the nurses will recognize it right away because you're the one who's screaming in the waiting room okay. and writhing around because with kidney stones, there is usually no comfortable position. So right. that's, a, that's a good way of telling if it's a kidney stone. If the patient says, oh, it hurts when I bend over, but then it's better in this position, probably not a kidney stone. Yeah. But when that stone is stuck, it doesn't matter what position you're in, mm -hmm. it's gonna hurt. So these people are restless. Oh, well, they're, they're I'd say more writhing. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Writhing in pain. Okay. okay, all right, so then uh, what kind of investigations or tests will you have done in the emergency room to help make the diagnosis of kidney stones? Uh, usually, uh, your analysis will just show that there's some blood in the urine, but ultimately uh, an ultrasound or a CT scan. Now, if you're younger, we want to avoid radiation, so we'll start with a, a, a ultrasound. 
but ultrasound is not good at finding stones that are in the little tube okay because there's all the bowel gas it's hard to find so if you're under 30 they might do an ultrasound but ct scan is usually the best okay. method and as an orthopedic surgeon you actually sometimes can see these on x-ray right they're radio opaque depending on their size that's right yeah okay so your investigation of choice is going to be either an ultrasound or a ct scan so that makes a diagnosis so you've got kidney stones uh, you've got the signs and symptoms you've got the investigations that show it what do you do well, it depends how much of a problem it is, it depends on the size of the stone, the location of the stone, and whether or not you have uh, infection involved. So okay. if there's an infection from a blocked kidney stone, that can actually be life-threatening. And that usually means if you have a fever and a kidney stone, it has to be drained. So that means usually getting rid of the stone or putting up a little tube to help drain the urine so that you don't get an infection that's ongoing that spreads into the blood. Okay, how do you get rid of the stone? Uh, so the, once the pain is managed, most people are able to go home mm -hmm. and then we can either send you, well, if it's a small stone, we might just say, let's try to get this to pass. Okay. So we can talk about the different things to help stones pass. Okay. Um, if it's a larger stone and it's very unlikely to pass, then we either will send you for shockwave lithotripsy to break the stone or we do a procedure where we use a tiny little camera called ureter ureteroscopy or ureteroscope and it goes up from below through the bladder up the tube to where the stone is and then we can use a laser to break the stone and use a basket to take out the pieces. And so just so people know the camera goes up your urethra through your bladder and then up into your ureter. Which and is you're asleep for that. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> yes, because it would be painful, obviously. Okay, so that, now you mentioned small stone, get it to pass. Right, so uh, stones can usually pass if they're, you know, two, three, four millimeters. Five millimeters can pass. I've had patients pass 10 millimeter stones, but that's unusual. So Whoa, 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 10, that's a centimeter. Yeah. So some people, what happens with blockage is that the ureter starts to dilate right. and, and I've seen people pass, you know, 10 millimeter stones. However, it's unusual. When you say pass, you don't mean pass it into the bladder. You mean pass it out the urethra. Out the urethra. It's like, honey, I got good news. I passed the stone. The bad news is I broke the toilet kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Like shooting out centimeter exactly. pellets. Exactly. Okay. Now for these little stones or smaller stones, so, you know, it's two, three, four, five, millimeters, even six millimeters, seven millimeters, we might say, let's give this a chance to pass. Mm -hmm. So we'll give you pain medication yep. so that you can manage the pain at home, hopefully. We'll give you anti-inflammatories like Ketorolac or Toradol or uh, Ibuprofen. And then uh, we also might use Flomax, which is a drug that relaxes the prostate, but it also relaxes smooth muscle in the ureter and may help a stone pass. And then you have all the herbal remedies and grandma's okay. tricks. So uh, there is a can of beer a day. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's good mainly because it's a diuretic. That was a dude that recommended that. Yeah, that was not grandma, that was grandpa. That was grandpa. Yeah. That was grandpa. <laughs> and that was Brad he Lee. would say two pints a day would yeah, probably okay. be more helpful. But pass. basically drinking lots of water. So the water, the beer, whatever the fluids, it's pushing that stone to come out. Um, then you have uh, there's a lot of herbal things. There's, uh, I forget the exact, I think it's chunk of pietra, uh, which is a Spanish word that means stone breaker. Oh, and I thought a chunk of pietra is the thing you got in there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's actually the stone breaker, okay. but um, people swear by it. But okay. there, because it's a natural herbal thing, uh -huh. nobody's going to invest money into right, studying it. So we don't know if it's coincidental, but a lot of people swear by it. Okay. That sounds like it would hurt to pass the stone. Is that accurate? It hurts as it's coming out. Now, once it's in the bladder, you have to remember the urethra is 10 times bigger right. than the ureters. Okay, so if good. it gets into the bladder, it's gonna come out. Yeah. Do yeah. you get people to, to pan for stones, essentially peeing through a grate of some sort so that they catch it so you can confirm that they've passed it or not necessarily? It is helpful. So if you pee into a jar and then pour that through a coffee filter, even you might see little grains of sand. Sometimes the stones will break up. So uh, it's not always if it's like a seven millimeter stone, you might not see a seven millimeter chunk come out. 
might be little grains of sand over time. Honey, the coffee tastes off this, this morning. This is why Paul doesn't drink coffee, I think. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> okay. And you just never know. So, so now we've done Nobody's the, peeing in a can of Coke. The, there you go. We've done the, the non-operative treatment of the stone. So say it is a more dangerous situation. Blood works revealed that either the kidney function is compromised or that we're very suspicious of an infection. They have a fever. So you, it's, a, it's an emergency, correct? If, if, if there's a fever and or if there's an elevated white count, um, then it's an emergency. Because stones have potential to do irreversible damage to kidney function. Is that correct? Well, if it's long standing. So if you have a stone that causes blockage um, and pain, and it's large, some people the pain does eventually go away. Right. But the stone doesn't, and some people can get irreversible damage if the kidney remains blocked. For now, weeks, right? It can take weeks or even months before yeah. there's irreversible damage. Okay, so that's the idea. You want to get this treated then in a timely fashion so you don't end up in the situation where you get infected or you get this irreversible damage. Now, you mentioned lithotripsy. So that's basically ultrasound, frequency waves. Well, it's, it's actually just a shock wave. Um, mm -hmm. And it's simply, it's a special spark plug with a parabolic mirror that focuses the shock waves through your body. So you go in a machine, lay down um, with a rubber tube pushing against your side where the kidney is. Okay. And then the shock waves are focused through the skin to land on the stone. And it's important to remember that this can only be used for stones that are visible on x-ray, a plain x-ray, not an ultrasound, right. okay. not a CT scan, it has to be seen on an x-ray. So you can aim the beam. So you can aim the beam. So a lot of people will say, hey, why can't you just shock this? Mm -hmm. But if we cannot see it on, a, on an x-ray, it can't be treated with shock waves. Okay. Cool. And then you can't get it shocked, so you're going to pass it, shock it, or you're going to go in with the scope and get it out. And laser it, yeah. So that's a procedure when you're asleep. And um, it's, it's the, the benefit of that is that we can break the stone up with the laser into many, many little pieces. So the success rate is better than the shock waves. So the okay. shock waves, if it's a really hard stone, may not work or worse. It breaks the stone into two or three pieces, which then each have to individually pass. Okay. And then you go through the same pain three or four times. Right. Thanks so, for your help, Doc. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So basically, to summarize, a renal colic is a kidney stone that is uh, obstructing your ureter and flow of urine, backs up into the kidney. Uh, very painful, but in the absence of fever or infection, uh, we can try to let it pass. It's not as emergent, even though you feel like it's an emergency because you're in so much pain. Fever, high white cell count, infection, that becomes an emergency. You've got to deal with the obstruction right away. And then either you're going to pass it, shock it, or get it out with a laser. Exactly. Okay. Love it. Now you know everything you need to know about kidney stones. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about your stone or your family stones. If you think you got a stone, get it checked out. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. Thanks, Dr. Ince, for educating us again. We'll see you next time.